Okay, this is lesson six, uh, practical demonstration in electromagnetism. So today we're looking at the principles of DC machines, uh, generators in particular. So today we're going to be looking at the construction and connection of a basic generator, some tests we can do on basic generator output at different speeds, and again test the basic generator at different amounts of field current. So as always, do a little uh, risk assessment, make sure you're going to keep everything safe. Uh, electric shock, supervision level direct, risk is uh, medium at B. Um, we're only going to use very low LV voltages and currents. Um, the field may get hot on our little generator. It's only a little kind of toy type generator I've got and the field gets hot easily so you just got to be careful we only operate that for short periods of time and of course let's keep leads and things up off the floor so we're not tripping over things. So here's basically what we've got. We're going to have a armature is connected to a commutator. And if you remember in our last lesson, we've uh, learned all about what a commutator is. So this is no different. This has a very simple commutator, but commutator it does have. It has a simple brush system to get power from our armature out to the real world. And then we have a thing called a shunt field, which is an electromagnet providing the magnetic field that our armature is going to cut. We're going to have a prime mover, which I have set up a little Lego battery operated motor to be our prime mover. We're going to be using the ammeter on our power supply to look at the current. Also got multimeter set up so we can look at the voltage output of our generator. So that's how it's all going to operate. So here's the physical parts of our generator. So I've got a base. I've got a field winding. You can see the field winding here. So there's my field winding. It looks like a solenoid because basically that's what it is. I have a frame or a stator. And you can see here I've colored the North Pole red and the South Pole blue. So my poles and my stator become the one thing and that's separated by a plastic former which forms the base of the generator itself and also magnetically keeps my poles apart. I have some frame ends which will hold the motor, that's these things. And inside each one, there's a small bearing. You can see it there. I have an armature, and my armature is already pre-made. I've got copper windings. You can see copper windings here on my armature. And that comes out to my commutator. It's only a two-segment commutator. Very, very simple commutator. And then finally, there's a shaft which runs through the whole device. And finally, instead of having lovely carbon brushes, I've just got these brushed. Um, these are actually steel brushes that are uh, zinc coated. So these will be my brushes for either side. So let's see how my generator is put together. So firstly, I've put into place one end onto the base. So a very simple start, we're just simply starting with the base and the one end bearing. Next, I've put into place my stator, or the frame of my generator, if you want to call it that, that's okay. Next step is to put the armature, shaft, and commutator in place. 
you can't see much of the actual armature itself but you can see the shaft running through here and you can see the uh, the commutator here on the end I'll show you a better picture of that before too long so next I've put the brushes in so you can now see the brushes connected through here to a terminal and similarly on the other side a bit hard to see I also have the second brush and next we have the actual field itself so I've put the, uh, the field in you can see it inserted now into the top here which is an electromagnet that's going to produce our magnetic field to operate our motor sorry our generator I should say so I've just turned it sideways a little bit so you can see a bit more clearly uh, what's happening and you can just see the armature in here the wires come out to the commutator then the commutator comes down via the brushes to the terminals there's a red terminal on the other side and my field winding through the top here producing a north pole on this side of my stator and a south pole on this side of my stator so I'm going to have magnetic field running neatly across here over the top of my armature so here's our actual generator setup so we have a power supply over here as you can see there's a power supply and I have that field being supplied by about 1.2 amps at 3 volts approximately so that's just the field supply and you can see that here that it's only electrically the power supply is only supplying the field current either side of the field winding giving me that magnetic field across here then I have a voltmeter DC volts being displayed here on my multimeter I've got a Lego generator here and I've just simply got a pulley system you can see with my rubber band around and onto here I've just got a battery pack here to operate my Lego motor and uh, so the Lego power pack is my prime mover um, I'm calling it prime mover variable because I'm going to use different size pulleys to get different speeds on my motor so my rubber band drive just a rubber band and there's my basic generator so my Lego motor becomes my prime mover I'm going to get different speeds simply by changing the pulley size so here's our first you can see here I've now changed the pulley size on my motor so I've got a small pulley to a small pulley so speed is kind of a ratio of one to one and you can see I'm getting about 44 millivolts or 0.044 of a volt out as the motor spins and you can see the blur of the spinning motor but you'll notice my field hasn't changed so it's still got about 3.5 volts at about 1.2 amps so my field strength 
hasn't changed and but I'm going what I would call slow because my pulley size is simply that one to one ratio. Our next step is reasonably straightforward and we're now upping the speed and you'll notice I've now got the big pulley to the small pulley so my ratio now make it go faster is two to one so I've pretty well pretty close to probably doubled maybe tripled the speed so pulley size is now large my field current hasn't changed still pulling 1.2 amps so still the same amount of field strength across my frame that my armature is spinning in but you will notice what's happened to the voltage here's the big kicker we've now got 111 millivolts so increase in speed speed has increased and voltage has increased so faster equals more speed sorry more sorry of course faster equals more speed but more speed equals more voltage so let's continue on to the next aspect so that's drive speed and output dealt with so now we're going to look at the generator setup this time and we're going to look at voltage output again from the brushes but we're going to vary the field so we're going to leave it on the large speed so we're going to you notice the speed we're going to leave it on fast down here but the thing we want to change and vary is the field strength that is the amount of magnetic force across here in our generator So let's look at the first one. We've got our generator spinning there. You can see the blur of the armature as it spins around. And our voltage is about 16 millivolts. But look at our armature current. Got the armature current set very low at 170 milliamps. So this is relatively low and our voltage output corresponds also low. So next we're going to up the uh, field strength. We're still, speed is still the same, speed is still fast, we haven't changed our ratio here on our drive motor but we have upped the current and we now have almost one amp of current going through our field therefore we have increased the field strength across here on our generator and what do we note our voltage has gone up so again increase in field increase in output voltage and one more time just to prove the point again we've maintained the same speed speed hasn't changed but this time we've put it up to nearly 2 amps or 2000 milliamps so very, very much higher amount of current. We've got lots and lots more magnetic field now across our motor. And we've got much, much, much more current. Speed hasn't changed, but our output has gone up, up, up considerably because we have more magnetic field being produced by this shunt winding, which is producing the magnetic field for the generator. So you can quite clearly see that there at 162 millivolts.
quite a large increase. So let's push it even further. Since we're allowed to put about three amps through the field, I thought, why don't we just jack it up to the maximum? So there's three amps through the field, speed is the same, and voltage has gone up even higher. So you can see here, huge increase, and we've got an increase again in the output current. So what can we say? What's our, what's our summary tell us? So here are the two tables. I've just reproduced them from the first two experiments. So in the first experiment over here on the right hand side, changing the speed to faster and faster and faster our output goes up. So if speed goes up, output goes up. That's, that's the result. So this is speed. Versus output. So it's speed versus output, and as the speed goes up, the output goes up. The one on the left hand side, we simply increased the current in the field. We maintain the speed at fast all the way through, same speed all the way through. And what do we end up with? The output got higher and higher and higher and higher. So as far as field current versus output. So the larger the stronger, well not larger, the stronger the magnetic field, the larger your output voltage will be. The faster that you spin through that magnetic field, the faster or the higher the output will be as well. So what are our observations from this? So what are the basic principles that control the output of a DC generator? One, the speed of the conductor through the magnetic field impacts the induced voltage. Speed in this case provided by our little prime mover, our pulley size changes, change the output of our generator. Two, the strength of the magnetic field is directly related to the induced EMF. The field strength was controlled by the amount of current through our field winding. The more current, the more magnetic field, the more magnetic field, the higher the generator's output. So that brings us to the end of Magnetism Practical number 6, DC Generators. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about DC generators, how they're built, how they work, and how we can control their output.